Now let's have a look at the serial monitor. Okay, that is sending out its data, so 8 centimeters or 9 centimeters, around 450 microseconds. I'm going to take another measurement at this distance, and that's what the wavelength, uh, what that's, and that's what the width of this wave in the echo pin looks like. So let's go ahead and do some measurements, right? So uh, let's do the easy automatic measurements. I'm going to go to the horizontal menu and I would like to have a look at the width. So this is the width measurement. So this is the width for the yellow channel, which remember in our sketch, we've set it to be 10 uh, microseconds. The oscilloscope here measures it it as 12 microseconds, but I guess that's close enough. But I also want to measure this width. This is more important. So let's go to measure and change the measure source to channel two, and then click on width again, press on width again, and there's the measurement 434 microseconds, which is close to what the Arduino is measuring. It's about seven centimeters, 414. Okay, with, this is within uh, a margin of difference. I wouldn't call it error, but the margin of difference that I would call acceptable you know, between the, the value that the oscilloscope is giving me and what the Arduino is saying. Uh, another measurement that we can make is the distance between this edge here, the falling edge of the trigger, and the rising edge of channel one, the echo. This is the distance that tells us how long it takes for the sensor to take a measurement and then send it back. This is when it starts sending back the measurement. We don't have an automatic way to measure that on the, uh, on the left set of menu items, but to make that work, we can use the cursors. Let's switch the cursors and turn them on, go for manual tracking. I'm going to remove my hand because we've captured the sample that we needed. There's nothing else that we need to do. And I'm going to move the time a bit towards the right so that I can see the, uh, the, the yellow poles otherwise it's going to be behind this label which I can't move. So I'm going to use the left X cursor. I'll put it right on top of the falling edge of the trigger then press the button down to select uh, cursor B. Move that right there which is the upslope on the echo pin right there. And this tells me how long it takes for the sensor to respond. So the delta between the two X cursors is 450 microseconds. So that's how long it takes for the sensor to measure and then send back its response. How about we take another measurement? So I'm going to use uh, post-it notes place the post-it notes right in, in front of the sensor at this distance. Okay, let's put it a bit closer and take a single measurement. There you go. So you can see the distance between uh, the downslope of this edge and the upslope of this edge is again about the same. Maybe changed slightly, increased to 452 microseconds, but otherwise it's the same. Now, while I'm working with the cursors, I'm going to go back in the cursor menu. Uh, the cursors are still selected. I'm going to switch to automatic. And what you can do with the automatic cursors is to get the oscilloscope to tell you the measurement settings. So, for example, here you can see that the oscilloscope is using the two uh, X axis cursors to show me the width of channel two, the blue channel, because that's what I've got selected here. 
if I wanted to know what the width of the, the first channel is, then I can do that just by pressing on the button, it will toggle between the two, and that will now highlight the uh, beginning and end of this pulse and match the uh, highlight the measurement down here. While I'm here, I'll just do one more measurement. So I'm going to go to the vertical measurements and I'd like to have a look at the peak to peak voltage. There you go. So peak to peak voltage for channel two is 584 millivolts, a little bit more than five volts. And do the same thing for channel one. Take again, peak to peak. There you go, like that. And then have another look at the cursor just to show you how you can switch the cursor between the different measurements that you have uh, 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 set down the bottom of the display. So I've got to select, let's say, peak to peak voltage for the blue channel. And there you go. So that is a peak in here. And there is a bottom peak down here. Maybe we'll to zoom in. This is for the blue channel. So change the time scale in the, uh, sorry, the voltage scale in the blue channel. And now you can see a little uh, edge going above the five volts. And that's what this line indicates. That's the highest voltage measured there. And down here is the lowest voltage. So a little line goes beyond uh, the ground level, the vol zero volts level. All right, let's put that back like that all right all right so that was it with this uh, little experiment using an ultrasonic distance sensor and visualizing its inputs and outputs in the oscilloscope let's go on to the next section where we'll do some experimentation with pwm signals <laughs>